What's happening legends? We have just arrived at Churchlands High School um, to do a morning of cricket activities with some young kids who are here from Mental Health Organisation Sports Week Clinic. So we're, uh, we've got 20 kids aged 8 to 14 and we are about to teach them a bit about cricket. Let's do it. Thank you. Thanks guys. Um, great to see you all here. So many young enthusiastic faces. Excellent. Anyone want to be a professional cricketer? Cool. I like to be a professional horse rider. Oh, that's good. That's excellent. Okay. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about cricket. We're going to play some cricket shortly, but I want to talk about a, f a little bit about what I do and a few things that I believe in with crossover to all sports. I knew that being here, I wouldn't be talking to people who just like cricket. So I thought I'd talk a bit about other things that I think will impact how far you guys can go in sport. Okay, you're obviously still quite young, so we're not going to get too complex, but this is my business, Cricket Mentoring, and it's all about, this is me when I was playing professionally in England. I made my debut against Bangladesh, the international team at Lords, which is the home of cricket. And now I'm running this business because I'm trying to be the mentor that I never had or I wish I had. Um, I think that having someone to talk to about your sport and about life um, is really, really important. And when I was playing professionally, I didn't really have that person to go to and say, oh, I'm struggling with this or I need to get better at that and have them guide me and give me advice. So now I'm trying to do that for young athletes, mostly cricketers, but I do cross over and I'll sort of coach and mentor other athletes. I'm trying to help people just on their journey of being the best they can be. Okay, whether that's on the field and in your sports performance or whether that's off the field and with your schooling or, or being a good person off the field, that's something we're really, really big on, really believe in. A mentor. a mentor is someone who guides you. Very good question. So it's like a coach, but it's, I think a coach sometimes just tells you about the, the physical skills or about your sport. A mentor is someone who really sort of goes on the journey with you and guides you both on and off the field. Does that make sense? So this is sort of our Instagram. We've built up quite a big following. We've got 120,000 followers um, through sharing lots of content. And we, what I do is we try and talk a fair bit about mindset and the mental skills needed to be the best you can be. So we put a lot of content on our Instagram page and then this is our YouTube page. We've got a 50 odd thousand and down there we've got nearly 8 million views on, Inst on YouTube. So we put a lot of content out there and that's how, as Brody said we, when he introduced me, we now are able to travel around the world coaching and mentoring cricketers. Um, I spend a lot of time in, in England and India, which are two sort of major cricketing countries in the world. So something that I want to talk to you guys about today, and this is something I didn't understand until later on in my life, and I really wish I knew this when I was younger, that I think that there's six pillars, we call it, six things that are going to determine your success as an athlete. The first one is technical. So in cricket, it's our technique. If it's basketball, it might be how you shoot the ball or footy, how you drop the ball. But in cricket, it's sort of how you hold the bat, how you move and, and your technique with your skill or your, your, what you're trying to do. The second thing is tactical. How do you put your technique into gameplay? How do you understand the tactics? Yeah, mate? Exactly, exactly. And if, for example, in, in footy, you wouldn't want to kick it to where there's 10 players and none of your teammates, you want to kick it to where your teammates free. So that's sort of not technical, it's tactical. So cricket, you want to hit the ball in the gaps. Exactly right, well done. Then this is the really important stuff, I believe, the mental, the physical, and the emotional, and also your lifestyle. Those four factors play a huge impact in how good you, be, you can be on, on the field and off the field. And this, isn't, this is what I didn't really understand when I was playing professionally. I didn't understand how important my mind and what I thought affected how I felt and then that affected how I performed. So I could perform really well in, when there was no pressure on or I could perform really well when I was in the nets, but often when I'd get in the game I'd get nervous, I'd get tense and I wasn't able to then execute my skills. Okay, and that's something that we all will go through. As human beings, we all have emotions. And there's a great sort of video that's going around at the moment of LeBron James. Does anyone know who LeBron James is? Yep. Who is he? No. Anyone else? Yep. He is. Excellent. He's one of the greatest basketball players of all time. And he's done a video series about the importance of managing your emotions. And even someone like that, who's one of the best ever, he still talks about how he gets nervous, he gets tense, he gets anxious. 
And what I think that does is it shows to all of us who are young and aspiring to be good sports people that that's okay. It's okay to get nervous. It's okay to be tense. But what's important is how we manage that, how we deal with that. And that's something we can do through our breathing. And I'm not going to go into too many details, but understanding that your, your mind and your emotions play a big impact on your performance, I think is a really important thing as you guys get older and you progress. I'd really encourage you to sort of try and get a mentor or someone, your coach, to talk to you about how you can manage your mind and your emotions. Um, so this is, anyone know who this is? Yes, excellent. Anyone know who, they, who Steve Smith is? What does he do? Yep. He does. He's one of the best batters ever. He's one of the greatest batters of all time. Okay, I'm just going to play a little quick video, 15 second video, and then I'm going to ask you guys what you think of that after this. So what is what are you guys? That was after he played in the Ashes. He played Australia versus England, five test matches, and he averaged 140. So every time he batted, he'd score an average of 140. Okay, what do you think he was saying there? Does anyone have any want to have a guess? Yep. Yep. Awesome. Exactly right. You want to hear it again? Hold. Uh. So, what's your name? Luke. Luke. Exactly what Luke said. This I sh I think I show this to all my athletes who are some are professional cricketers, some are younger, aspiring to be professional. That sometimes our physical skill doesn't have to be at our best to still succeed. Why did Tony say you're joking? Because, because he did so well, and from the, everyone watching, it looked like he must have been at the top of his game, at the very best of his game. But he said, no, I wasn't hitting the ball as well as I could, but he still dominated the, the series. He still was the best player by a long way. So I think that shows the importance of what you're thinking and what your mind, how, how important your mind is in your performance. You don't have to be at your absolute best to su su have success. So what you think has a massive impact on how you perform. The best athletes manage their thoughts through their routines, okay? We won't go into too much detail on that, but that's about getting your mind in the right space to perform. Your emotions. Emotions is understand that how you feel will impact how you perform. The best athletes learn how to use their emotions to their advantage. And that's what I was talking about. The nerves you get when you go out and play, and I'm sure who's been nervous before they've played a game of sport before? Awesome. That's really normal. That's really, really normal. Okay, so a lot of people get scared of feeling nervous or get scared of feeling worried. But the first step is to understand that's normal, that's okay. Then as you get older, you, you can start to learn how to use those nerves, use that emotion to your advantage. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah? Instead of like, when we get nervous, a lot, what a lot of us do is we get scared and we get worried and then we don't perform well because we think something's wrong with us. Absolutely normal. Okay, and then finally, this is something that I think this whole camp is about, is creating mental well-being and physical well-being. And these are the sort of things that we talk about with our athletes that determine how good you become. Okay, Plan your time, practice being grateful for what you have. That's probably not so much for you guys, but always have a water bottle with you, have consistent sleep well, eat well, um, read and try and upskill yourself, limit your TV time, your screen time. Invest in yourself, smile and laugh, set goals, exercise regularly. I'm sure you guys all do that because you're here. Um, stretch regularly, reflect about what you're doing, what you're learning, uh, practice mindfulness um, and seek mentors. So that's what we talk about off the field. That's going to determine how good you can be on the field. Okay, I've got another, I think this is another video. Okay, this is a video, two minutes. I want you to watch this and we'll chat about this quickly after. All right, what's the main message out of that? What do you guys take out of that? I hope you could hear it okay. Yep. That if you practice, you'll get better at things. Yeah, well done. Yep. Try your hardest. Well done. Yep. Anyone else? Yep. That success isn't an accident. It's when you work hard. Exactly right. Well done. What's your name? Felix. Felix, well done. So that's, I think, something for you guys to, if you can understand that, and if you can take one thing away from what I do all this week, it's the harder you work, the better you get. There's no... One more. There's no shortcut to success. 
So if you want to be a good sports person, you want to be a good doctor, you want to be good at anything, because not all of you put your hand up saying you want to be a professional sports person. I do. Awesome. Um, you've got to put in the work, okay? And you're obviously here, you're having lots of fun. That's the main thing for now is you have fun. But as you guys get older, if you and hopefully you, you do it because you love it. You don't do it because... You, you're told to do it. You decide that you want to you want to play sport. You love it. I, I played cricket professionally because I put in a lot of work. I trained really hard, but I did it because I loved it. And there's not many better careers, I reckon, than being a professional sports person where you can just go and play sport, get paid for it, have a lot of free time. You travel and you live the dream, really. So my thing for you guys is just if you want to be great, you've got to put in the work. Any questions about any of that, guys? I didn't want to talk for too long. I think we can get, yeah? started cricket what inspired you to play well i started because my parents oh no actually i my, my my friend i was i was nine years old and my best friend in school was playing cricket and i'd sleep over his house on a friday night and i'd bring my white clothes and then he would go and play and i'd field if they were short and then my parents said do you want to play and then first ball i ever faced i hit a four and i was addicted and i <laughs> yeah i just i've just never stopped so that's there. Yeah, that, but then I, I think I enjoyed the team, the camaraderie, the teammates that you get to sort of play with, and the competition. I loved the sort of competing one on one with the with the bowler sort of thing. Yep. How long have you been playing for? So, twenty three years, I reckon, about that. Yep, since I was nine, and I'm thir nearly thirty three. Yep. Um, how old were you until you played? So I'm still playing now. I'm still playing in the Wacker comp, um, the, the Perth main comp. And yeah, I'll be 33 and this might be my last year. Any, any other questions? Yep. Do you like playing it? Love it. Love it. That's why I play it. Because I think if you don't enjoy it, there's probably no point playing it. Like I think you've got to, first and foremost, you've got to enjoy what you do. Yep. Have you ever like, woken up and not wanted to play? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that comes back to managing your mind and your emotions. And yeah, at times, because I play, I've played a lot of cricket in my life, at times I work and I can't be bothered today, but the great athletes, they might think that, but then they find a way to still go out and perform. And they find a way to continue to stay fresh so that they do love it. Because you don't want to get to a point where it becomes like, you don't enjoy it, then you may as well give up. Like you keep waking up in the morning and it's like, oh, not again. Yep, that's right, that's right, yep. What's your highest score? 182 not out. <laughs> Against, for, yeah, yep. Did you have a question? Um, no, <laughs> not quite. I've, I've, yeah, I've hit on top of a tree once, but yeah, nothing on top of the roof of the stadium. Good question, though. And I think only a few players have done that. You need to be pretty strong to do that. We can maybe practice a bit of that later. Yep. Um, is hitting it on top of, a, of the roof, does that count as a six? It is. It's a six, exactly. All right, should we do some cricket, do some, yeah. some games? Yeah.